It's this week in movies, but I feel like I should issue a warning about this next interview. Some viewers might find parts of this chat unsettling. Russell Crowe is back on the big screen. This time, though, he's fighting demons as the Vatican's chief exorcist. Imagine what could happen if the devil possessed the soul of the Pope's exorcist. Who will defend you? Okay, big breaths, everyone. The Pope's Exorcist is inspired by real events, which adds a whole other level of intensity to the story. We've got our film critic, Rad, joining us in studio with more. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, like, I, I've seen this trailer in full, yeah. and, like, it is next level. What do we know about the Pope's Exorcist? Yeah, so bear in mind, I'm, I'm basing this off trailer, too. I haven't seen the movie yet, but what we know is Russell Crowe, he is playing, as, they, as the title says, the Pope's Exorcist. So, as you'd expect, he's being, in this kind of movie, he's being summoned to Right. Repossess the soul of a child, but as I understand, like this movie goes beyond the whole power of Christ compels you and tells a story. Of, it goes a bit Da Vinci's Code. It's about Russell Crowe's character unearthing the secrets that are buried in the catacombs of the of the Vatican. Oh, so we got a bit of mystery yeah. mixed in here. So the film is inspired by actual true events. Russell Crowe, in an interview, talks about playing Father Gabriel Amorth. Let's take a look at this, this clip. In this film, I play a real man, Father Gabriel Amor. I am the chief exorcist of the Vatican. My position was appointed by the Pope. It was actually a real job in the Vatican. The majority of cases do not require an exorcism. 98% are recommended by him to doctors and psychiatrists. The other 2%, I call it evil. He was a very controversial character. He performed thousands of exorcisms. Okay, so Rod, what more can you tell us? I mean, yeah, so I mean, as you said, he's like the, the, the Vatican's chief exorcist. He's even known as the Dean of Exorcists. Uh, so this real guy who performed tens of thousands of exorcisms up until he passed away in 2016. And actually, I learned about him through a profile written by William Friedkin, who is the director of The Exorcist, the movie The Exorcist, right? So William Friedkin wrote a profile on him when he passed away in 2016. In fact, uh, Amorth was a fan of The Exorcist because that movie, you know, it, it raised his profile. It brought some awareness to what he does for a living. And so he actually invited William Friedkin for a ride-along. So imagine that, going on a ride-along with an exorcist. Like, yeah, come, so come check out some possessed souls with me. Um, and, and Friedkin went along. Uh, wow. Yeah, and, and, you know, so Friedkin, he wrote about this. He, he even recorded this. He documented, like, uh, one girl they call Rosa, who he, he witnessed have these violent convulsions, but also this clarity of mind, which was like, so then he showed it to medical experts and they, they found it baffling. Like they didn't have an easy scientific explanation for what he was witnessing. So uh, Morth had a fan in the director of The Exorcist, William Friedkin. That's like chills on the next level. It's it's yeah. it's creepy, it's freaky, and it's like also really compelling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? So I should note that tr the trailer in its full is quite scary, but we are gonna put up the QR code. If you want to watch it in full, you're gonna scan this here uh, after the interview, and it's gonna take you there, and you're gonna watch the full thing. Rat horror movies, we know this, they do really well with audiences, mm -hmm. but in particular, movies about exorcisms, mm -hmm. from either The Exorcist to The Conjuring, why is that? Yeah, well, you know, I think the appeal of exorcism stories is like all of a sudden the horror is coming closer to home. And when I when I say home, I'm talking about your own body, right? Because the haunted house is your body. Like it doesn't get much more visceral than that, right? So I think that's the appeal. And of course, you know, the appeal comes from the OG, the Exorcist. That movie it inspired not just the uh, uh, like exorcism movies. It also inspired like body horror movies. Because when you think of Reagan turning her head 360, like that was right. just like that started a whole new genre. But you know, the Exorcist we can't discount the influence this movie has. I mean, it's turning 50 years. Old this year and this is the reason why the exorcist was such a big deal is because you had you had a prestige director making a serious drama out of horror right because the exorcist was the first horror movie and one of the only horror movies to be nominated for best picture at the oscars and, really? and yeah so and it's a part of it is like you know he william freakin he was taking this stuff seriously oh sorry not just the uh, best picture nominee i should say this is also one of the og blockbusters like godfather exorcist Jaws. Those were. That's when the blockbuster was created. This movie is still in the top ten if you adjust for inflation. So it made it sold more tickets than any Avengers movie, any Avatar movie, any Star Wars movie except for A New Hope. That's how big it was. So whether you like the genre or not, you cannot discount it. No, you can't discount it, especially because, like, I mean, again, what what they did when you have a serious director 
making a horror movie with The Exorcist. That was, that was like a whole new level. That was like the era of Rosemary's Baby and The Shining. All of a sudden, you take this stuff seriously. And it's still inspiring filmmakers today. There's a lot of filmmakers trying to imitate that with like Hereditary to the Babadook, but never were quite topping how visceral the OG was. Okay, well, speaking of inspiration, Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. he stars as the chief exorcist in the movie. This feels like somewhat of a new type of role for him. I, I mentioned inspiration because when you look back at his career, mm -hmm. what stands out to you and what has inspired you? I mean, okay, so for me, I mean, my, I, when I think of Russell Crowe, I always think back to L.A. Confidential, 1997 neo-noir oh detective God, story. Oh, my God, look at him. Yeah. He's a baby. Exactly. I mean, this ah! is his breakout role. He played Officer Bud White, who is, he, who's, I mean, so first of all, this is a movie. It's a, <gasps> it's a detective story set in old Hollywood, so it's steeped in Hollywood history. And it's a movie I love because that, that this, this is my... Uh, my gateway drug, basically. This is the movie that inspired me to go back and look up Hollywood history and learn about Hollywood history and made me what I am today. Oh so that's God. why it has a special place in my part. But for him, Russell Crowe's performance, he was the guy that, the tough cop, the cop that was brought in to scare, scare the bad guys and stuff. And he wanted, to, his character, his, the character arc is all about him wanting to prove that he's smarter than that. And that's Russell Crowe's career. He always gets cast in these aggressive roles, but he gives you more depth and like he just brings more to the role than you would expect. Okay, well, something to look forward to. Rad, it's great to have you in. Thanks for having me. Me. You can catch The Pope's Exorcist exclusively in movie theaters beginning tonight. We'll be right back. Your morning is brought to you in part by The Pope's Exorcist, now playing exclusively in movie theaters. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.